All right, so we're in the middle of putting the brakes on this. And uh, we were waiting for parts a minute ago. Uh, but I'm going to explain to you guys real quick why disc brakes always work better than drum brakes, even though your drum brakes have all this material here to stop with versus a disc brake that only has these two little pads. So you might think the surface area is a lot smaller on this. So why does it work better? How does it stop better? Let's talk about this so we can really understand this. So this is the thing. Why do drum brakes not work as well? And why have they changed them all to disc? And if you stay in the video, uh, at the end I'll explain to you why that big trucks are still using drum brakes even though they don't stop as well as disc brakes. Uh, a lot of people don't believe that that's true. I'm going to talk to you about why they do that. So anyway, the first part is going to be about uh, the uh, friction, the stopping area of the brakes. The second part is going to be about the hydraulic uh, leverage. So there's two different issues on disc brakes and why that they work better and why that they stop better than drum brakes. Number one is the stopping area. So what you have is you have two circumferences. You have this circumference of the brake shoes, okay? The roundness of this area of the brake shoes and the roundness here, the circumference of the drum. Now, as the drum gets hotter, it actually gets larger. So what happens is you're constantly having a difference in friction area. So, you know, when the brakes are cool, you might have the whole brake shoe stopping fine. But what happens as soon as you run your foot on the brake for a little while? The brake drum gets hotter. So then what happens is less and less of the friction material is actually touching the, the drum. So that's one of the major issues with drum brakes. That's why a lot of vehicles don't use them. They're going away from drum brakes to disc brakes because they work better. There's a couple of other issues, things that I'm going to go over as well, but that's the first one. So if you can imagine this drum getting bigger and this shoe, if it was more round, more of a shape like this than the drum is, because when the drum gets bigger, it changes the, the actual angle of the, uh, of the surface. And so it's always changing the friction area of the brake shoe. Um, this, the second thing that's really important to know is 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 about the uh, the leverage so let's say you've got a 19 millimeter uh, master cylinder and you've got 19 millimeter wheel cylinders okay so you your leverage is one to one okay so when you push on your brakes as much force as you can put on your brake pedal you do on your wheel cylinder Okay, it's a little bit different than that because the wheel cylinders are different sizes than the master cylinder. But what has to happen with drum brakes is they have to go out a lot further and retract a lot more with these springs to, um, to, to create, to, to be able to stop. So there's a lot more traveling distance here. So if they make too large of a wheel cylinder, okay, like let's say you made bigger wheel cylinders, really big wheel cylinders, and you had a, a really small master cylinder, you'd have more leverage to stop, so you would get more, more stopping power from doing that. But what would happen is it would have to travel out too far, so your brake pedal would have to go way up and down too far, the travel in there, to be able to make it go out far enough for that leverage to help you. Now let's take a look at the disc brakes, and this is where disc brakes shine, okay? This is the big difference, okay, is the leverage. So how big is the piston on your disc brakes? Oh, this one's probably like 36 millimeter, okay? How big is the piston on here? 19 millimeter or something like that? I don't know the exact numbers, but so you've got a really small amount it's like putting a giant pry bar on something and you can get so much more leverage because the hydraulic leverage created by because that has so much smaller 
uh, of a uh, of a movement. So that has to move these things. Now the great things about disc brakes is there's only a very small amount of movement required. So uh, because of this uh, square seal that I'm going to go over in a second, uh, there's the, the shoe is right next to right next to the the, the uh, disc. There's almost no gap between the, the disc and the brake shoe. So it doesn't have to travel very far. So what you can do with disc brakes is you can create so much more leverage because you have a large piston. Now they have the two piston, they have the four piston calipers, and usually the four piston ones stop a little bit better even yet because you've got that times four, okay? You've got four different pistons and they're a little bit larger. They're a little bit smaller than the ones on the big piston here. Like this one has a really big piston. This is called a sliding caliper where the slot caliper like moves back and forth. Uh, they, but even these sliding calipers work really, really well in comparison to the drum brake system. So that's the main reasons why. And I'm gonna explain now real quick how that that is able to stay so close. The disc brake shoe is able to stay so close to the rotor because of the square seal system. This is all stuff I learned when I became an ASE Master Auto Technician many, many years ago. And all this stuff's on the test. You guys who are studying for a test, you can learn the stuff that's on there. Okay, so what they have is this is your caliper piston, very large piston and your caliper. And it has this square seal inside the caliper and what happens is as that piston pushes out the square seal twists like this and what happens naturally is when you let off the brake and there's no hydraulic pressure behind it the square seal actually sucks the piston back just enough so that the so that the brake uh, shoes won't rub against the rotor so you always have a really really tight gap in with your, uh, with your, with, with your brake, uh, with your brake pad and your rotor, it's really really tight gap in there, almost no gap. So that's a great thing because you have a leverage. You have a very small piston in the on the master cylinder, and you have a, a the ability to have a really large piston, or sometimes even four pistons uh, that are large uh, that that. Uh, can that you can get so much more leverage it's like having a giant pry bar think about it that way to stop your car so it's that's why disc brakes you have so much more leverage the other thing is they dissipate heat better um, the old drums used to have um, the old old cars used to have fins on the drums even with the fins and everything you could not get the drums to cool nearly as easy the other thing that helps, helps really good with the disc brakes versus the drum brakes is when they get wet, what happens in the drum is the water just flings around inside the drum and it stays in there for a longer period of time. With the disc brake, it's able to release the water quicker so that you can get your car stopping again pretty quickly. They still, when you get brakes wet, they still don't stop as good. So just keep that in mind. Um, now, so that's that covers it. Pretty much most of the stuff about disc brakes. Now people are going to say, well on big trucks, big trucks stop, they use drum brakes because they work better. And that's not true. A lot of the new trucks uh, that I'm aware of, I don't work on trucks, but a lot of the tractor trailers are going to disc brakes. Now let me tell you why that they haven't done it in all these years. Let's talk about how the air brake system works. Okay, the air brake, the problem you have when you have air brakes, you have a giant drum. You have a drum that's two feet tall. So in order for the brake shoes to travel back and forth, as you push in the brake, it, it, it goes open and shut like this, right? For them to travel this far to be able to touch the drums, okay, they have to use air brakes because if you used hydraulic, you wouldn't have enough fluid transfer for it to be able to move out that far because you're talking about when the brakes are off you know you might be a half an inch from the drum so in order for it to 
work on that larger larger circumference. So the reason why that the trucks still use air brakes and and still use drum brakes and I'm going to this is my theory. You know, I don't know 100%, but I'm pretty sure that I'm right. I usually am. Okay? So you can research this and find out for yourself and I'm sure you will find out that I am right with this. The it's because of the travel on the drums. Now if they were to say, okay, we're going to switch everything over to hydraulic disc brakes, and all the trailers all have airlines to them, think about all the trailers out there that have airlines. They would have to change the entire industry. So I, I don't know how the new systems work, but I've seen a whole bunch of trailers. I've seen a whole bunch of axles in the back of trucks that look like they were for trucks, and they all had disc brakes on them. So they have to have some sort of a transfer system that goes from the uh, air to a hydraulic uh, system to run the disc brakes. And the reason that they didn't run them back in the old days is it's, it's too hard for them to change. So they would have to basically change all the trailers over to a whole different system, all the trucks over to a whole different system when all they do right now is they can just grab a trailer, they hook up their airlines to it, they connect yourselves to it, and they drive away. Now, if you had trucks that were hydraulic brake systems with, with, uh, with disc brakes and you had trailers that had drum brakes with air brake system, and you, know, you would not be able to just go pick up any trailer with any truck, and that's the whole reason that I believe that they've stayed with the drum brake system because you know number one it's the whole system would have to be changed it have to go to like a hydraulic type system uh you know in order for for to because because they're not having to use air to fill up that giant gap between the rotor and the and the brake pad like they do with the drums the drums the reason that they have that is because they they have literally have half an inch of movement you know in in the brake drum between the brake drum and the shoe so they have to have air to be able to do that. And if they went to hydraulic, you know, a, a disc brake system, they would have to change all the trucks and trailers all over to hydraulic type brakes. And, you know, the connecting and disconnecting of the truck to the trailer, just think if it was hydraulics, you know, you're not going to get the same stopping power because of that reason only. It's nothing to do with the, the brakes themselves. It's nothing to do with disc brakes versus drum. It's more of a user thing that you can connect a big truck by air air to a big trailer and it's much easier to do and transfer than it is to try and tr switch everything over to hydraulics and make hydraulic lines that switch over and they get air in them and all this other stuff to be able to make the hydraulic trailer and the hydraulic truck work out now i know that they're doing some of this and they have done it but i don't i'm not aware of how it's being done so i can't really talk about that but I've, I have seen those trailers, uh, I've seen trailers with just tons and tons of disc brake, large disc brake axles, they were for tractor trailers out there, and I believe that they're going to start start changing that over somewhat, and because it does work better, and, and it's safer, and you know, with the, you don't have to adjust disc, disc brakes, they, you know, they just wear out, when they wear out, you replace the pads, it's a, it's a way better system, they stop better, they work better, that's why. Alright, I'll talk to you guys in the next video, please like, share, and subscribe.